let's talk about the new book, Ice Sniper. It feels to me like a big book. You're coming back to a really big, broad canvas. People wanted me to write another classic sniper novel, like Point of Impact, and I didn't really feel ready for it. I explored the family in one book. As I say, I went to Japan in another book. I kept looking for, I just didn't have an image. I didn't have a way of doing it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it poorly. And it took me literally 13 years to feel ready to do another big sniper book. And by that time, sniping culture had changed somewhat. So I was able to find a dichotomy that is between an old sniper, a mill dot sniper like Bob, and a, a, a modern sniper with a computer-driven Horace style scope, a piece of technology that's extremely advanced and would seem to give that fellow a, an advantage if the two of them ever squared off. And it was a great pleasure I had in sort of manipulating the plot so that I have these two snipers stalking each other in the wilderness, one with a computer driven scope and the other with the old mill dot scope and trying to figure out the way that talent, character, and creativity could beat technology. And it was just, it was really a lot of fun and my imagination just was taken by that and I just, you know, as I said, I, I just really could feel this book taking off. I hope it reaches a level that I haven't reached before. I hope it reaches a level that people will think it's as good as Point of Impact. I can't seem to get back to that level. Everyone, that's, <laughs> they keep saying to me, yeah, that's pretty good, but it's no Point of Impact. All right, already, I know that. I've heard that. Shut up, please. On the other hand, there's a lot of New York Times bestsellers on those that's, lists. Well, that's true. That's very it's true. It's a good objective criteria yeah, for it evaluation. Is. It is indeed. Now, the Ramona Cliff. Yeah. In the very beginning yeah. of *I Sniper*, I, yeah. I have to give you credit for that. I, I'm sure everyone will recognize the I character so, that yeah. you kill. Well, I love Romana Clef. It's a cheap device, and yet it helps me enormously to use people that are clearly based on or versions of other people. In this book, we begin with the murder of Jane Fonda. Now. I'll keep my politics out of this. You keep your politics <laughs> out of this. But there's a saying in Hollywood, if you give the people what they want, they'll stand in line to get it. <laughs> and I kind of think that was factoring into my, uh, into my decision to sacrifice Ms. Fonda on the altar of my ego. And uh, the two other people that... Uh, there's one of them is somewhat fictitious, but the other two people are... Uh, Bill Ayers and Bernadette Dorn, a version of them uh, goes to the chopper. And, you know, again, we don't need to get political on this show, but I didn't weep any bitter tears. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I kind of like that part of it, but I don't want to go there. You know, it was, it's a good way, it, it helps me to know the limits if I'm based somewhat on, on real persons. Steve, not to give anything away at the end of Ice Sniper, but cowboy action shooting plays a big and, and really great role well, at the you. end of the novel. Yeah, I, you know, I love to get aspects of the gun community into the books because so many people don't know anything about it. And I had an opportunity, I also love westerns, and I saw a way to finish this book with a classic Shane-style Western confrontation. And it involves, it involves, you know, the venue, the vessel for the time travel, as it were, was cowboy action shooting. And I had a great deal of fun manipulating the plot to get two antagonists facing each other, <laughs> you know, in the middle of Main Street, um, it just, it was fun, you know, I, I uh, the book is serious, but it's also, like, there's a spirit of play in it I think anyone will recognize, and uh, th th this sort of represents that. I would also like to thank you for the introduction where you dedicate the book to so many gun writers. Well, you know, the gun magazines are sort of the red-headed stepchild of journalism, you know, you can beat on them all day long if you want, but when I realized 
that I had spent the last 25 years reading gun magazines virtually every night, and I buy them all every weekend uh, and, or every month. I buy them all, and I spend hours on them, and they've given me a great deal of pleasure, and nobody ever pays much attention to them, you know? Nobody acknowledges them or it's just a little sealed world and I thought you know this is a way for me to pay some of these guys back for all the information that they've given me over the years and all the you know I mean in some sense if you can't go shooting reading a gun magazine is a it's a pretty good substitute. Now this is a question that, that as a writer myself I hate to get so I'm sure you hate to get it as well where do you go from here? Well, I've actually got it. I'm going to do another sniper book. I don't have any choice because I've signed a contract. <laughs> I'm obligated. Uh, I think it's a very good plot, and I may actually start it one of these days. Not today, <laughs> not tomorrow, I don't think next week, but I better start it soon because it's due pretty soon. So I've got to get busy on it, and it'll take, again, it's Bob, but it's the older, more reflective Bob. It's going to take him in a very contemporary direction. Uh, it'll involve manhunts. It'll involve, again, another technology of sniping as sniping has developed in a strange way. It'll have a Middle Eastern background. We'll issue, we'll deal with some of the issues that we're confronting today. And we've also got what we think is a very cool twist in mind. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the uh, uh, to writing it. No, I'm not, but <laughs> I, I, will, I will write it because they'll sue me if I don't. No, that's not the way. To, I will, you know, once I get into it, it'll be great fun, I know, and I, it'll be a good book. It's got, I've got a title for it. At this point, it's called Dead Zero. Okay. Okay. Bob has kids. Is there another generation of swaggers that's going to follow I've along? I've always thought, I, I thought if I ever wanted to write children's books or young adult books, I might do Nikki Swagger, Horse Detective. <laughs> because my daughter, Nikki, is obviously based on my daughter, Amy, and Amy was a horse girl uh, growing up. Uh, we, we, uh, we invested in horses to keep her away from boys, and of course we ended up with both horses and boys, so that was a total disaster. But uh, she's now a newspaper reporter, and um, I, I haven't, I, I don't have an immediate plan. I mean, what I want to do is finish this book, and then sleep for 16 years, and then we'll see <laughs> what I'm capable of at the age of 89. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll do something with another generation. We'll see. Steve, as always, thank you. Michael, thank you. It's great. You're a great guy.